Hello friends, last time I discussed something about surface tension and I asked something and I uh, explained the questions uh, in a way so that you all can understand. This time I uh, will focus on some basic concepts of physics. The physical meaning of operators that we use in physics. Okay, so basically we always deal math and physics like uh, physics is also math. Like kind of we also use the operators. We don't know the meaning of the operators. But in physics the basic difference between math and physics is the mathemati mathematicians they do their job in an abstract manner. They don't know what is happening outside. What is going to it is it going to be physical or not but physics the most important thing is whatever you usually use that have something physical the meaning should be like a uh, physically feasible meaning okay so let us discuss something more of what i want to say just like the field we usually come with the uh, concept that field it may be scalar field maybe a vector field first of all what do you mean by a field what do you understand whenever i define something field field is kind of that is uh, i mean this may be a scalar field or vector field what field play i mean whenever there is a force uh, on something like there is a gravitation so for this the object is falling the object is falling under which condition under the gravitational field the charge is moving under what the charge is moving under the electric field so the field, the concept of force will automatically come. Basically, there is something that will uh, give some force to act or for acting the object from one uh, one um, uh, one point to another point. Something like that. The broad concept of field just come with the scalar field and a vector field. Scalar field like temperature. You have some kind of a collision where the temperature is different from region to region. Suppose in region 1 there is temperature T1 and region 2 there is temperature T2. You don't need to define any direction, right? You just all you know need to know that its magnitude. The temperature at this region is 27 degrees centigrade and temperature at another region is 29 degrees centigrade. Okay, you don't need to define the direction of the temperature like that. So the field which you usually demonstrate that will be a scalar field. Now, what the vector field um, trying to I'm trying to say the vector field is just like a you know, heat flow. You are defining that the region where the heat flow is from this direction to that direction. You have to define a certain direction to the heat flow, the heat uh, from uh, higher heat region to a lower heat region. So you have to define its magnitude as well as its direction. Whether it may be from left to right or maybe from right to left. So basically the you have to make understand that the field that is scalar field we need to only define the magnitude. Whereas the vector field you need to define magnitude as well as direction just like electric field from north pole from the positive to negative magnetic field from north pole to south pole heat flow from um, this direction to that direction okay but in case of temperature you don't need to say that uh, this temperature along this direction or the, along that direction all you have to deal with the magnitude okay this is a basic difference of a scalar field and a vector field and i also demonstrated when the field plays its role Whenever a charge is moving or an object is falling or a magnet is doing something, this is a magnetic field, it is a uh, electric field, it is a gravitational field. Okay. Now in uh, physics, we also define some operators like gradient operator, divergence operator, curl. So you have to know what do you mean by this. So the gradient is the derivative of the field. Derivative means the rate of change along x direction that will be grad equals to we also define that grad operator is let me write it here del del x of i cap plus del del y of j cap plus del del z of k cap so whenever there is kind of special variation of that field you this is a vector operator you put a, a scalar quantity Suppose this is scalar vector is A. So what will be uh, grad of A? Will be del A by del X 
I cap, del A by del Y is J cap, del A by del Z K cap. Okay. So what does it mean? The special variation of A along X. The variation may be positive or negative, but something you, whenever you see this gradient is non-zero, that is there is something the special, special variation of that field is exist, does exist. Okay, that is the main thing, that whenever the gradient, I am telling you, the special variation of that field, that I am trying to say. So, first of all, you do you just usually see, okay, gradient is that you mechanically write del del x, del del y, del del z, but you don't know the meaning of this equation. The del del x means the spatial variation along x, del del y means the spatial variation along y, del del z means the spatial variation along z. Now, if I uh, introduce an operator del del t, this is a time evolution operator. Time evolution means at time t1, the field may be a1. At time t2, the, just like in quantum mechanics, we usually do the time evolution of wave function. Means at time t1, the wave function is psi1. And at time t2, the wave function may be psi2. That is another linear combination. That is not that previous, but another. So this is the time evolution operator. Because it involves time with that wave function. So whatever I am trying to say that the gradient is the spatial variation of that field. It expressed. Now what does the divergence mean? Divergence means that outflow outgoing flux. Okay. Means the you have a positive charge like plus Q. So the outward flux, the the outward flux is net outward flux del dot. Uh, e will be non-zero. Uh, so the divergence basically show the number of outgoing flux. If divergence becomes zero, so there will be number of outgoing flux equals to number of ingoing flux. Means no net outgoing flux outside that. This kind of del dot b we usually come up with del dot b equals to zero. What does it mean? And del dot e is non-zero. What does it mean? Del dot e equals to rho by epsilon naught uh, in free space like this is not zero means that there is a source definitely there is a source charge exists which is responsible for the net output flux to be non-zero and then log v equals to zero means the net outward flux is zero that is the flux is closed that means that the, there no magnetic monopole exists and this is a magnet, uh, elliptic monopole definitely exists. Okay. Now we go with the uh, uh, with this operator curl. What does this mean? Curl is the rotation of the vector field. Just like you you have some waterfall and uh, there is a stone. So water is curling around that stone. Okay. So suppose you just put a small object, a small paper, okay, on that water and you will see that the water is curling around, that paper is curling around with that water around that stone. So it is like the curling of, curl of a vector field that depend, that is denoted by the curl operator, the rotation of a vector field, okay. Now, <coughs> pardon, there are two useful theorems. One is if curl of A is 0, then there is a psi such that A is grass psi. And second is if del dot D equals to 0, that means curl of A is 0, then there will be something that A can be expressed as grass psi. And if del dot D equals to 0 means divergence of D is 0, there is a C such that D equals to curl of C. What does it mean? The psi here is the scalar potential and the C is the vector potential. These two theorems will come into play in electrodynamics. You can, you, these are the two most important useful theorems in physics. Okay. Now, uh, let us come to a very basic thing, equation of motion of a string. Okay. So, before Maxwell, before EM theory, all we know that electro wave equation is del 2 y del x 2 minus 1 by f square del 2 y del 2 equals to 0. So in light also we use uh, c square in uh, the place of b square. Okay. Where does it come from? All comes from Newton's law of motion. How is it so? Let us explain. Suppose I have a string. 
I just stretch it and I mount and at a certain particular position the coordinate of this point is this y is a function of x and t okay because I am stretching and it is continuously uh, changing its position with time so obviously the displacement y will be the function of x as well as t okay so the result uh, I have I have shown here the stretch stream so the result here the angle theta 1 and there is the angle theta 2 definitely theta 1 is not equal to theta 2 if theta 1 becomes theta 2 then there will be no resultant force so there uh, the result there theta 1 is not equal to theta 2 the resultant force is t sin theta 1 minus t sin theta 2 where t is the tension of the string now uh, uh, when theta is very small then sin theta i can write it as the tan theta so in term place of sin theta 1 sin theta 2 i write it tan theta 1 tan theta 2 and i know that tan theta is the tangent that is i can uh, write it del d by del x uh, del y by del x at x plus del x suppose this position at x plus del x and this position is at x so tan theta i can write it tan theta 1 equals to del y by del x at x plus dx and tan theta 2 equals to del y by dx at x so i can write it like this because the function i we define a function f of x plus dx minus f of x divided by delta x equals to df by dx that is the derivative of a function means f of x plus h minus f of h x divided by h equals to df by dh right so i write it i just put it here df by dh uh, uh, df equals to f of x plus h minus f of x into del h i just write it exactly in the same manner so now this is the resultant force. Now according to Newton's second law, uh, f, uh, f equals to mass into acceleration. So acceleration for acceleration, I define the quantity mass as mu into dx. That is the mass, and acceleration is g2 y by d, dt2. So the two terms will be equal. Resultant force equals to mass into acceleration. So just you simplify it, and I get this as a dimension of one by v. So it is 1 by v square del 2 by del x2 equals to 1 by v square into del 2 by del t2 and I write the general wave equation. Now what is the most general solution of this wave equation? The most general solution of this wave equation is some function x minus vt, the combination of x minus vt plus x plus vt where x minus vt when the motion is along positive x direction and x plus vt when the motion is along negative x direction. And this is the most general wave equation of a string. From then you also get the wave equation for Maxwell equation the, for the electric field, for the magnetic field, for the vibration. This is the most general solution of this wave equation. So uh, earlier I just described something, some concepts of surface tension. Today I tried some mathematical operators. The physical mean, I tried to explain the physical meaning of that mathematical expression an equation of motion of a string so i think uh, day by day i will improve and thanks for watching